So let's talk about how we are going to model an atom inside a molecular simulation. This is true both for molecular dynamics and for Monte Carlo simulations. In fact, molecular dynamics and Monte Carlo have more similitudes than differences when we are using them inside to study molecular systems. So let's start with a bit of theory. How should a potential be? Let's consider we are working in Cartesian coordinates. We are not considering strange situations in which we are going to use generalized coordinates. So in Cartesian coordinates we know that the potential energy does only depend on the positions of the various atoms. So one, two, three, till atom n. Of course in each case we will have x, y, z. The problem is that there is no analytical solution for this because there is no analytical solution for the many body problems problem. We have analytical solution only for the two body problem. So what are we going to do? We can consider this as a sum of a, a series of functions that do only depend on one atom plus a sum of a series of functions that do only depend on two atoms plus a sum that goes on 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, forever of course this, is, this does only exist if we have an external field otherwise it will be zero and it's quite common for it to be zero there are molecular dynamics in which we apply an external field and okay we will have this but that's the more common part the one in which we have no field, but we have the interaction between the particles. Now, how can we model it? So, how it's usually done is that we have an, effic an efficient potential, now considered only for one couple, so for ij, that will be a f some kind of function that depends on qi, qj, temperature and pressure. In fact, uh, usually a potential energy shouldn't uh, depend on temperature and pressure. And even here we don't have temperature and pressure. But we must somehow deal with the fact that we cut away a huge chunk of this expression, everything after the second order. And a correction to do it is including a temperature and pressure dependency. But uh, how this is usually done is in uh, this dividing it in a columbic part that is the usually 1, 4, pi, epsilon, qi, qj, r, ej. So that's the columbic potential. And another potential that will uh, deal with the van der Waals interactions. That is usually, so van der Waals, is usually done with Leonard Jones. That's the more common one. And the Leonard Jones pot potential is an expression like this sigma r 12 minus sigma r 6. So we have a repulsive part that goes to zero very, very quickly and a more attractive part that goes to zero a bit slower and two um, parameters, epsilon and sigma. So the form of the Leonard Jones potential, where here is energy and here is Rij, is something like this. So you will have that the energy will go to infinity if we try to overimpose the nuclei there will be an attractive dump and then we will have a tail that will go to zero at infinity. As this, this means that if two particles are not infinitely uh, distant they will feel each other, a bit, each other a little bit. And the thing that we have this tail uh, can be a bit of a problem in some situations. Also the Columbic force uh, has a long range, actually the Columbic force has a very 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 long range but that's a bigger problem that will be addressed in a different video. 
Now let's talk a little bit about how we can deal with the Leonard Jones. So let's consider a not charged system. As long as we have a closed box with our atoms, so we don't have periodic boundary conditions, we don't really care about what happens to this tail because they will only interact with each other and there is nothing outside here so if there is uh, if the tail isn't zero up here we don't care about it because there is nothing here to interact with the only things we have is inside here so as long as we are in this very simple situation we don't care at all but at a certain point we might want to study a bigger box and so we might need to do some domain decomposition to separate it on different parts of a parallel computer. Or, an uh, even more common situation, we might want to use periodic boundary condition. The problem with periodic boundary conditions is that if you have a very very long tail, my atom will feel itself. And this is obviously not something we want to have, because it will give some spurious interaction of the atom following itself, creating a spurious, or better, there is a spurious periodicity because we created it, but we don't want to see the effects of it. Because usually if we use PBC we don't want to see how a periodic system behaves, but how a bulk system behaves. And a bulk system is quite often not periodic, except maybe for crystals. So we have somehow to cut this tail in order to stop having this kind of problems. How can you cut this tail? The easiest but dirtiest way of doing it is simply cutting the potential at a certain cutoff radio. radius. We don't care about anything, we simply decide from here on it's zero. But you can immediately see the problem. We have a this continuous potential energy. We have a jump. This means that inside our system we will have a discontinuous potential energy and therefore we will also have discontinuous forces and this will bring to spurious uh, results. So, the e first or easiest way we could solve this problem is by adding a linear smoothing function. So we'll have this radio and then the true cutoff radius where we will have in the middle this linear smoothing function. So we will have a continuous potential. We'll have it. The problem is that the left and right uh, first derivative of this potential will be different. Thus it will be discontinuous. And the first um, derivative is the force. And that's quite a problem. Because again we don't want to have discontinuous forces because they can give you some strange behaviors. So again, how could we solve it? Another way to solve it is to pull my Leonard Jones up. So we pull it up in order that it will touch zero somewhere. So we literally put it up and then we will cut it here and we'll stop considering it. In this way, we will have a, poten a continuous potential energy and a continuous force. We won't have discontinuities because, of course, we will put this part where uh, it was already almost zero, and so we won't have the strange discontinuities both in the force and in the energy. Now I'm exaggerating them to show them, but no one will do such a mess. The problem here is that, of course, we have put up the energy dip and therefore the attractive interactions won't be as attractive as they used to be. That's not a big deal if you hire all the energies the same but if you have different atoms you might hire them in different ways and this might change interactions between the atoms and that's something you should address with some corrections and you should know. So, as you can already see, there is no a perfect way of doing it. There are various good, better or worst way of doing them, 
and it also depends on your needs, your system, what you need to do, etc, etc, etc. Now, I talked about the Leonard Jones potential because it's the most commonly used, but there are also other potentials that are usually used because they are easier and quicker to compute. The, we have the hard sphere potential, where at a certain radius, the potential will go from zero to infinity. So it's literally, we have hard spheres that cannot compenetrate. Of course, as you can see, we have a big discontinuity in the forces because we, all, we only have impulsive forces, zero or infinity, no, no way in the middle. This means that if you want to use rigid spheres, you have to use an ad hoc algorithm both for molecular dynamics and also for Monte Carlo. Another way could be to use the soft sphere potential that will go to infinity a bit slower. It will be zero somewhere and then go to infinity slower. In this case we have no discontinuity, so we will have no problems in using it in normal programs and normal algorithms. Of course we completely lose the uh, attractive part, but if it's not of our interest, we can use it. Or if we want to have the attractive part, but we don't want to bother using a Leonard Jones, we also can use uh, a box like potential. So zero, a dip, infinity. You have the attractive part, but of course you have, but you have a much easier function, even though you will notice that there are some big in discontinuities. So you will have to deal with it. Uh, actually, as you may have noted, the soft sphere potential is nothing more than a part of the Leonard Jones because if we add an attractive part that will decay slower, what we get is a Leonard Jones. So the soft sphere is simply a piece of the Leonard Jones, and that's why it's easier, it's simply one half of it. So that's how we usually you deal with dispersion if we in general if we want to represent it and if we want to cut it somewhere. Uh, even though the expression for the Columbic interaction is a bit easier than the one of the Leonard Jones, dealing it with it if we want to use PBC is a whole different situation that I will talk about in different videos because it's more complex than this. Simply cutting off won't would work. I hope you enjoyed the video. All the sources and the materials I used to do it are written in the description below. And here is some more content for you. But wait, don't click on it yet. First remember to leave a feedback in the comment section to let me know what you think about it. Like, subscribe, follow me on social media, links in the description. And if you would like to support the channel, consider to donate on Patreon. Again, link in the description below. See you next time. I'm Maurice Karnbrook for The Computational Chemist.